Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, sorry. I was wondering what happened to you. I couldn't find I you. I know. I had some technical issue just now. Yeah. So usual. This yeah. Day. Yeah. So this was my phone that I use all the time, but mm -hmm. then um, it it can't actually do live with this, so I have to do it with another phone. But then I lost the password and I have to reset it. <laughs> all that kind of issue. You got lost into then... all the technology. I know, and I'm all sweaty now. <laughs> oh, no, forget about it. Let me just adjust the volume. Can you hear me properly? Yes, I can. Can you? <clears throat> yes, I can hear as well. Nice to see you again, Ada. I know. We've got quite a few people joining tonight, and uh, some of them have also sent some questions. And this is one of um, my first, first senses, I would say, because it's... It's a very, I think it's an, a very important aspect in our life, in our industry. And during this time, I think everybody needs some sense as well. So yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. And thank you for everyone who is watching. This is the first time I do this. So I'm quite excited. <laughs> and I thought it was a good idea to talk about sense. Uh, now that we're all home, and it's a good way to focus on our passions. Definitely, definitely. So, um, so just a little uh, introduction to everybody who doesn't know uh, Nicola. Um, he, I met Nicola um, during a course that he did uh, called Design with Sense. As a lot of you guys might know, I go to courses every year, like try to equip myself all the time and this is one of the greatest courses that I have actually been to because um, it's, I mean, I'm trained in aromatherapy and I've got my own blending method, but then like going into one that's actually hosted by a perfuming, perfu in a perfume industry is completely different. I work different ways. So yeah, Nicola, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody? Yes, so uh, we met, I think it was 2014. I was looking back at the pictures yesterday. My God. <laughs> it's been quite a while. Can you believe that? Six years ago, I remember it was a very nice and sunny and hot July week when you came to Design with Sense. And this is a course that we hold um, now at London College of Fashion. Back then it was Kingston University. And you were amongst this amazing crowd of creatives very much people across different creative industries beauty industry who wanted to experiment um how to use sense as, as a tool as a media as part of the projects which was what the school uh, the course was about and the course is about because it's still running although we had to just cancel unfortunately ah. the march session but hopefully we'll come up come again soon and um and yeah other than that i also make fragrances um mostly bespoke one-to-one -one for a brand called flores here in london and i do believe that fragrance is a way to enhance the lives and the projects of people so it's quite exciting for me to do this today which is very much about how we can uh use some sense to i guess feel good feel better feel a better connection to to the time we're experiencing right yeah definitely definitely so today um i've actually left in my post to mention to everybody if they've got essential oils uh bring them out we might go through the ones that you have but we might not but it doesn't matter because i think it's a whole like sniffing experience so if you're actually holding a you know a glass of red wine sniffing that's fine <laughs> more than welcome to um i think nicola we talked about um this this session it's actually best that we start with some raw materials talking about some notes um because i think this is a very fundamental in what we do and it's very yeah. common in both um, industries, perfumery and skincare, but also it's very accessible as well, like essential oils. It's, it's very accessible. Everybody can buy them um, either online and it's not very expensive for blind buying 
blind purchase as well <laughs> during these days when you can't actually um, choose them. Um, so we have decided to go through um, some of our favorite essential oils notes um, and we'll just talk about it and then you know and you can ask questions all the time we might answer straight away or we might just leave it till the end um, it's pretty free flow okay <laughs> yes so I'm gonna start then asking you yeah so today I guess we are going to pick two or three cents each and talk about why we like them and especially now so starting from what we can call the heart of the fragrance which is the biggest so-called fragrance family which is the floral of course flowers have been the main source of inspiration for for centuries so if you were to pick one note that you particularly resonate with right now what would it be uh, for me is jasmine uh, i like florals is you know something that i think it's two years ago if you ask me florals is not my um favorite family i would say but i think as i grow um older um and I think also because of my life has evolved into quite hectic and I almost feel like from floral, I really can find my femininity back. And Jasmine, I like it because it's, it's very femin feminine in a way that it's also masculine, I would say. So in a way that um, it's not, I, I wouldn't say Jasmine is soft sense. Um, to me, it's quite, strong um but there's this citrus note in there that intrigues me um yeah so i like it and i like the animalic um side of it just being very um i don't know sensual as well <laughs> absolutely yeah so jasmine actually when I trained in perfumery was my first Hello. Hi. Sorry. There no, was an interruption okay. for a second. Um, yeah, so this was my first love when I studied perfumery about 20 years ago. Um, for me, it's a scent of duality. I'm a very white floral person. So my, my taste is definitely on white flowers. Mm. And Jasmine, um, I agree with you, has this dual aspect of um, some of it is actually to me more than fresh, a little bit fruity, because if you look at actually the molecular breakdown of Jasmine, there's a lot of molecules inside and you have a lot of different smells inside the Jasmine. And one of them is this tropical, um, fruity area because there's some some molecules that actually smell like coconut inside jasmine mm. so it definitely has a bit of a fruity aspect but then you have this thing you mentioned this very sensual um, nature and in fact it's amazing that inside jasmine you can find lots of different smells from fruit to comfort effectively Okay. One of the key molecules is the indole, which has this very strong carnal, a bit dirty, a bit animalic. I love aspect. it. And it's this um, very complex combination, which to me makes it particularly interesting. But also it's very Mediterranean. So it's a it's mm. scent that you very commonly find um, in the place where I come from, which is Italy. What about um, Hong Kong? Is it something you find quite easily in Hong Kong as well. It's very interesting. Like when I, when I started aromatherapy, uh, Jasmine is actually one of the florals that I would list at, you know, least favorite because it really resonates um, some very cheap detergent or cheap perfumes. I guess it's, it's one of the thing that growing up in Asia, um, there are a lot of mock-offs of, expensive scents as we know jasmine is actually very expensive um 
so I didn't actually get a very when I first smell even very good jasmine I get that um, relation of cheap florals and obviously after a while it just grows into me and I, and I think the more I was I am further apart from Asia the more I I am more neutral I feel um, in scent as well so so yeah and also with temperature doesn't help as well if if it's cheap perfume cheap detergents very hot and humid like humid um, it doesn't help for you to grow in love with um, like nice perfumes uh, ni nice uh, notes so yeah and I've got a question that I'd like you to explain to everybody or like give a little um, light so question one is there are actually quite a lot of jasmine um, essential oils on the market and they're very expensive can you just tell us maybe different types of jasmine the most common type of different jasmine um in you know how do they smell well i this is uh, a bit technical i don't want to get into like a perfumery class <laughs> we don't have like so much time yeah um i would say that the best thing before diving into actually the types of jasmine which i'm not sure it's very accessible because when you buy an essential oil um is from the market without going to a raw material supplier you would i guess not really have the chance to buy either sambac from india or egyptian jasmine so personally i would suggest that people compare the fragrance notes within the same family that may okay. be more accessible if you see what i mean mm -hmm. so if you're yeah. talking about, um for example about white flowers so jasmine is white flower so i would much rather encourage people to smell different white floral notes. For example, compare um, jasmine to neroli, orange blossom, or tuberose. Also because, you know, sometimes people may not necessarily find a great difference if they're not used to smelling, if they're not, that's not their job. Maybe it, it wouldn't necessarily make a big difference to smell Egyptian jasmine or, or Indian jasmine. So, um, yeah, I would recommend to compare and maybe also then compare the white florals to, for example, another subcategory of the, of the floral family, for example, rose, which is, you mm. know, completely different, a miles away, so that it's very easy for people to have a sense of how different all these different notes are. Mm -hmm. um, talking about which, I think I'm going to mention the next one, which is orange blossom. Yay! So always staying on the um, on the white flowers. So connecting to what I just said. I today brought to the table the orange blossom, which is also something I recently posted on. You have it there with you? Yeah, I have it. So orange blossom is, I must say, definitely one of my favorites. Possibly my favorite floral note in general right now. Yeah. Although my first love was definitely Jasmine. Now, this has grown so much on me over the last 20 years. And it's this uh, duality again that there is, as this is a flower of the Bitoran tree. So you have this fresh citrus aspect on one side and then on the other side you have this carnal strong intense nearly sexual um side to it yeah. so it is again a white flowers it has molecules in common with jasmine but this is a flower coming out of a citrus tree yeah um 
and it's, so it's amazing. different. What's your take on orange blossom? Orange blossom, it's um, it's definitely a citrus floral for me. Um, I love it being very fresh, but I I tend to have to use it very carefully because it is so intense. <laughs> um, that when I blend with everything, um, I usually really leave leave it till the end to add into blends because it I'll, I'll have like a base of it and then i really gradually blend it in because i feel it's so strong um and i guess because of the citrus notes um you can really smell it very easily so that it can overpower um the blend yeah a lot of people have a difficulty with orange blossom actually I guess it depends um, where you're from. That, you know, uh, plays a big role in terms of how we perceive scents. Mm. People from different countries have very different tastes. For example, here in England, I find that people don't really like orange blossom a lot. Really? But then, yes. But the moment you go into Germany, France, south of Europe, Spain, Italy, Northern Africa, people absolutely love orange blossom because it's a tree that is, is part of the landscape. In England, there's mm. no trees. So I guess maybe this is why people are less connected. But interestingly, orange blossom is something that comes from Asia. Yeah. I don't know if you knew about this, but the whole citrus plants come from, originally come from China and India. They were brought into the Mediterranean by the Arabs, but before then, uh, that's where they were. And actually, I've done a few lectures with Chinese students, and to them as well, interestingly enough, it's a new scent because I don't think it's so much part of the natural landscape, to my mm. understanding, anymore in in Asia. Yeah. And um, no. is it part of Hong Kong? Well, no. <laughs> Do you remember seeing you no know, the citrus trees there? I've never been. No, not really. Um, or maybe I'm just too much of a city girl. I did really grow up hiking, and my parents are just not that type. <laughs> so, so I haven't really. All these activities of exploring nature started, I think, in my thirties, when I feel like, oh, I've discovered a newfound passion that is nature. <laughs> And to me, this is so much south of Italy, actually. It reminds me of um, my best friend's wedding, which oh, was wow. a few years ago in a beautiful Arabic castle in Sicily. And I have this very vivid memory of uh, dinner being served in a big terrace, open air, with the surrounding smell of jasmine and orange blossom together. How beautiful. Yeah, they, to be honest, both of them, they are both very strong, but I guess because they are both very strong, um, when I blend them, it's, they work so perfectly. I think the citrus note just joins everything together. And then there's this kind of round floral heart, and then it goes into this very, at the back, there's always this very, a pulse of being very animalic and sensual um, that really, really just intrigued me. I've actually blended in some of my products as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so the two of them together. So that could be actually an interesting combination if people want to play around. So trying with jasmine and then adding on top of it orange blossom because that adds another layer and it, it helps in the creation of what we would call a white floral bouquet or a white floral court. So you are kind of staying within the same family, this white flowers, but you're adding different tones to it. Beautiful. Incredibly uplifting for me. I also used it in the, in the fragrance I launched last year with Floris Verfugere. Actually used narrowly, which is uh, slightly different, but it's still the, um, the scent of the orange blossoms. 
What about Woody? Do we have any favorites there? Uh, definitely. It's very interesting that you mentioned Woody. I know why it's actually in, in that family, but the smell doesn't remind me of wood. <laughs> um, uh, fur needle, fur bals balsam in, your, in how you would term it. Um, in our aromatherapy, we call it fur needle. So a um, needle-like pine tree that's being grown in, grown in Siberia, like in you know, very, very high Alps. So it's one of my favorite, favorite scent wise. I love it, but I would say functional wise, it's one that I use a lot in my treatments, in my clinic um, to treat. Um, it has got this, let's talk about scent first. It's, for me, it's very fresh. Um, it's almost like a whiff of very icy wind. That's how I would describe it um yeah so that's that's how i really like it and that's why i think this this oil i use to treat a lot of people who can't sleep so um different people might have different take to this scent it might be it may smell very astringent to some people but then i think once i diluted it and then use it for a massage um that kind of very um transparent wind kind of um ambience would, would come out and i use this with people who can't sleep when i treat people who can't sleep i usually have to identify them either they need a pamper a pat on the back like a hug or do they need a clearance of, of their blockages so this one i use a lot for clearance of blockages which a lot of time is actually how i treat usually men um more uh, or like people who have got so much adrenaline all the time then i use this a lot stability okay yeah but stability stability ground ground is interesting which yeah. is isn't it in in aromatherapy as far as i understand most of actually the woody notes are used to create um sense of grounding and, and stability yes but i think it's this ground can be very different from wood like um amorous wood uh sam like sandalwood those i would say it's grounding with like really putting two hands on your shoulder and ground you that kind of feeling but this it's almost like um ground you by clearing your head. I feel that it's grounding you with a more, it's clearance first, and by then, then you are grounded. <laughs> yeah, probably because it's also a different uh, part of the tree. So it's, you call it like that because it's the needles you use, use the needles, the resin to make it. So yeah. it's got a, probably a different quality as opposed to, I don't know, tree shaping. So roots that sometimes are using woody material. And I totally see this forest-like effect, environment that you can smell when you smell it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. And, and it's also very much linked to um, Chinese medicine as well. In, in TCM, we actually use fur needle to treat people with um, phlegms or blockage with respiratory problem, like in the lungs. So if you think about in Chinese medicine, we always visualize the lungs like a, a tree. So it inhale and exhale um, all the essences that's in the universe. So, yeah, so I think um, that, that all matches up on why I use this a lot for my, um, my treatment. It's incredibly powerful, that one. So maybe it's especially good for now because, you know, uh, there's now yeah. the world is having this this breathing problem or this is the, the yeah. big where humanity is facing at the moment so maybe this could be something that people could use just to inhale or or to mm -hmm. apply on the body we also need to recommend right not to if people use them not to use yeah. oils pure but always dilute them <laughs> use them on skin yes guys please um um caution note first 
Uh, all these essential oils, please dilute them to one to two percent um, before you use them. Inhalation is fine, but if you are going to massage into the body or you know leave it on, please one to two percent with a base oil, apricot kernel or uh, jojoba oil, whatever uh, your base, the base oil that you have at home. Um, one of the things that I always recommend my clients to do with this oil, for example, fur needle oil um, for sleep, is that you can lie down and then take a piece of towel, like a, you know, when baby want to have like a comfort towel laid on top of the chest, and then put a few drops on. And as you are just falling asleep, you would be able to inhale it as well. It's so great that you managed to combine your passion with fragrance with the other talents of you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that is so great it's, it it's makes just like... more mindfulness about applying scents to well-being and to massage uh, beauty aromatherapy well sorry not aromatherapy acupuncture that's so yeah. fascinating i'm very I feel so much aligned maybe this is why we met because scents are energy aren't they yeah very interesting and it's, it's quite interesting that you brought up the, the saying that you use them with men, especially because um, perfumery, so now I was talking about perfumery, has this uh, tendency to categorize woody scents as masculine, floral scents as feminine, right? So something that is more volatile and fragile and beautiful is a flower, is a woman. And something that is stronger, solid, sturdy is a man. Um, and in fact, I was going to mention next vetiver. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to connect to your uh, fur balsam, which effectively we didn't say, but the, the, the family of trees is that of the pine tree. Yeah. And uh, so this is a so that is the scent that comes from a tree. This one I just mentioned still belongs to woody, but it's a very different um, note because it's not from a tree. So vetiver is a thick grass that you find in volcanic regions such as Java, for example, Haiti, and it's the root that you use the super long root going quite a few meters under the ground. And this is definitely another one of my absolutely favorite smells because of the complexity of it. So you definitely smell it and you feel rooted into the ground. That's how yeah. I feel. I feel the humidity of the soil. I feel the greenness of the thick grass above ground. And I have in my mouth at the back of the throat a sort of aftertaste, which reminds me of licorice. Oh, wow. Yeah, now you, you mentioned it. Mm. You see that? Yes. And I'm actually smelling a super old vetiver. It's, it's mm -hmm. aged very, very well. <laughs> yeah, to me, it's a very penetrating type of oil um very stabilizing as far as i i knew from my aromatherapy books this is as well used to again to 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 ground people so to take people out of their heads and and to here and now so yeah. again a very stabilizing type of oil but very different from the one we mentioned before this is yeah. maybe you agree much fresher much, this order. is much fresher? To me, vetiver is much more fresher than... So the one we smell, fir balsam, to me is... I feel the greatness of this tree. I can really see the tree, the forest. I can feel the thickness of the resin. So it's a very complex to me and very strong image. Interesting. This to me is much more volatile, if that makes sense, or kind of transparent. It's not so linear or... I, I definitely don't see a tree here. Mm. To me, it's the other way around. Um, Interesting. Vetiver, for me, is 
the stronger rooted kind of heavyweight stabilizer if you know what i mean <laughs> so for example when i mentioned that if someone can't sleep there are two methods that i will treat i will um treat one is comforting and grounding the person yeah. this is the one that i will use clearing would be the other one wow yeah i guess it also depends it's, it's so interesting to compare different worlds because yeah. the world of perfumers i think see things in one way in one way aromatherapists may see that from a different angle and also the clients will see it very differently like for me it's whenever i treat whenever i use aromatherapy um even when a person just lie down just to cleanse their face which blend do i actually use on this person can it, it's a diagnosis that we had from the beginning but it's it's also an intuitive feel of this would this person like this kind of um scent say for example uh, someone actually came in and then um she talks very fast just a very fiddly very fast talking person um although maybe she might have uh acne problems which should be you know we we should be treating with like maybe more citrusy lighter oils i might actually use something that's completely different because i need to calm her so it would be something that's thicker more cocooning more pampering so yeah and like different people as you said have different impressions on scents based on our history culture age so like it's so hard for me to get a try to find a favorite because it's just change all the time this is why i love to do bespoke perfumery because it's one to one it's made yeah. just for one person and it's uh, to me maybe that's because that's a job i do but the moment you start making one to one you realize that everybody theoretically should have their one to one because exactly. it's so difficult to give something so personal like a, like a perfume like a scent scent is personal the most personal uh of the things we wear and it's so um difficult to give one that can be good for a lot of people definitely definitely but you still see more the mass do you still see the masculine connotation with vetiver or do you also use it sometimes um, um with I, both genders i actually use it for both genders having having like rewind it <laughs> i actually use it with uh, both genders in a blend mm -hmm. um but it's not like I would use it neat, like just just with this sense, um, diluted with maybe a female client. I don't think that might work. Or I should actually say there are better alternatives. And again, I think, sorry, sorry. I think this impression is also um, like recognized by how the industry have been working for so many years. Yes. Unfortunately, yes, yeah. when we create a skincare product, Rose always, you know, during a focus group, uh, uh, you know, a survey, Rose always would win. And then, although I really want to use Neroli or Ylang Ylang, well, commercial wise, Rose sells, so it has to be Rose. Which is another one so interesting, Rose, isn't it? Because in, in the West, it's feminine, but in the Middle East, it's masculine. Oh, is it? wow yes when i lived in saudi arabia i learned about this that men wear rose and that's when i started wearing rose i do wear rose now oh wow interesting i love it this uh, oh, wow. friend from saudi they gave me these uh, local perfumes which contain this thing called the thai rose which is this uh, well that's what they say uh, which is a typical saudi rose oh, but wow. also that in North Africa, men wear jasmine as well, in India as well. True, true, true. You know, perfumery is very much of a Western, modern perfumery. It's very much of a Western concept, after all. But sometimes used in ingredients that are not from here. Yeah, yeah, true. And so I think in Asia, a lot of cultures actually immerse scents in their 
festivals, you know, weddings, um, like India, it's just a very Absolutely. big example of it. It's, it's all around you. Ylang, Ylang, everywhere. Like for the seven days weddings, you'll have all sorts of sense rituals from like cleansing the feet to, you know, spreading everything into the bed. That's like a dream, to... music to my ears. I know. <laughs> we need to go. Yeah, we don't have a lot of time. So, um, do you we have can time? Mention the last... it, yeah. If you, okay. if you like, we can still mention the last, uh, the last That's one. Cool. Talking about woody, what would you pick in terms of resins? Resins, definitely frankincense. I think that's um, very well known. And I have it here. Oh, Everything great. Up. Do you burn them? Like, do you, do you use uh, them as an incense? No, because otherwise my fire alarm would go off. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a very modern building. There's fire alarms everywhere. Oh. And currently a fire problem anyway. So, yeah, tell me what, what you like about this i like frankincense because it's it's very neutral to me in all aspects so it's very grounding but it's not it doesn't pull you to the ground if you know what i mean it's not like one that when you smell then you'll be deflated and then and then you'll just be melted into the ground um which is good for some people but then um because there's this citrus note on top as well, and a bit of like astringent mint, I would say, menthol note. So it all, it's also very energizing for me. So this is, a, for me, is a good match of stability and um, stimulation. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I agree. I was showing the raw material here because often people don't mm -hmm. know what Actually, most of the time, people don't know what frankincense is like, which is a dry, desiccated resin. So it's a thick uh, stuff that you get from the trunk of the tree. In fact, we also call them the tears of a tree, right? Mm. And I totally see the duality again, like with a lot of raw materials. What's really beautiful is... Yes, you see the woody gummy aspect, but then it has this freshness you mentioned, which you described as menthol. To me, it's very citrusy. So actually, some of the molecules of frankincense, if I'm correct, uh, the frankincense has, has some molecules in common with citrus. So that is also a freshness that, you know, comes from there. And it's a resin that is different from any other resin because of that. I love to use it in woody compositions. I love to use it in citrus compositions because as you say, it's both fresh and stabilizing as, uh, because it's effectively coming from a tree. So you have this um, black and white sort of effect because they are very different, the two polar opposites of, uh, of frankincense. And then of course the story behind it, right? Which is why we mention it. It's, the scent mostly associated with spiritualism. So one of the needs of this era is, I guess, that's how I see it. It's this need to reach out within to our spiritual being. And this is what humanity has used the most since antiquity to burn, thinking that the smoke coming from these raw materials would help to reach the gods above so a sense that has an incredibly strong spiritual connotation mostly i guess for christians but not only and um yeah actually i was reading about the meaning of the word incense ah. which is to awaken an emotion I think it's, it's, it's very important and I think this is a very, frankincense is indeed a very good, I would say, entry point of um, going into like from the outward, looking yourself from the outwards and go inwards. And I think that not, I, I practiced arts before 
And until today, I feel very fortunate that I spent many years in performing arts, in loving arts, because then... Oh, yes, you're a dancer. It's true. Yes. You yes. have so many talents. No. So I feel that I'm very fortunate that it's very easy for me to connect to the inner self. Um, and sense is one of the medium that I think it's very also quite accessible for everybody to try to um, use it to relate it to the inner self. So it's, it's not something that's very difficult. It's sniffing and then just putting yourself into that kind of impression and then take a you know, gentle moment, um, quiet down, maybe think about the sense or just enjoy it. Um, and I think frankincense is definitely one that's very good. And, and if you diffuse frankincense, it's beautiful. Um, cause I think smelling like this, putting into towels, diffusing different uses. Um, if you use different scents, you may get different effects. So not all are very good for diffusing, for example. Um, if you diffuse tea tree or peppermint, it will just be too much all of the like sometimes I feel. Um, but frankincense is very beautiful to be diffused. And unisex, isn't it? Yes, definitely, definitely. I think both men, at least in my experience, it's liked by both men and women alike. Yeah, definitely. But I know your absolute favorite resin is something else. Yes, <laughs> my absolute favorite resin is actually, and one of the resin that will stabilize me the most um, is benzoin. So benzoin and uh. Nicholas, <laughs> Nicholas have the um, raw material. Is that? It's now like a drug. Let's be um, honest, yeah. here we, we're moving from spiritual into addiction. <laughs> So obviously it takes, you know, drugs to really stabilize me. <laughs> yeah, but this is so amazing. Benzoin, it's sweet. It's, it's better than amazing. chocolate. Yeah, exactly. Right. So whenever I smell benzoin, I would feel like ah, oh, someone is hugging me. Yeah. Oh my God. This is what it looks like. It's from Indonesia. Mostly. Mm -hmm. From a tree again, the styrax, styrax benzoin tree. So, um, again, it's the the sap that comes out, the juice that comes out of the tree. How and do you use yes. benzoin? Do you use it a lot? Sorry. How do, do you use it? benzoin? So, well, benzoin mostly used in Oriental perfumes. So, whenever you're trying to to well in a way you said it it's like a hug it's a very warm impression you want to give and it's used one of the key combinations of course is with vanilla so vanilla and benzoin is like bread and butter and um it's warm it's luxurious it's sensual it's, uh it's sugary it's milky it's chocolatey it's definitely something indulgent something rich something warm so i see what you mean when when you say it's <laughs> receiving a a hug but a big hug like a, yes. Teddy a bear very hug. generous hug yes and uh, yeah mostly used in oriental perfumes in in perfumery i've used a tiny bit of this as well in the perfume i mentioned before verfugere to kind of give a bit of comfort in the background not much, but I used a bit of it with vanilla to create this lingering sense of comfort. Do you use it much, Benzo, in yourself? Um, yes, I use it in blends and I actually use it with citrus. So I'm pulling the two sides um, and then creating this very happy sense, but not, um, but not sharp, if you know what I mean. Like one of my favorite citrus scents that is lime. So lime reminds me of, you know, merry-go-around, the lollipops, but then it can be quite um, really citrusy, like sharp, tarty. Yeah. So I would usually blend uh, lemon, lime, this kind of, um, with this kind of milky 
um, dense, so to tone it down, but you still get kind of uplifting positive energy um, from the stents um, for, you know, for the massage or just for inhalation uh, before uh, treatment. So to finish on this, I have found a quote that I would like to read. Beautiful. Because um, actually benzoin is one of the ingredients mentioned by one of my favorite poets, Baudelaire, the French poet. If I find it now, it was somewhere here. So this is the poem called, it's from Le Fleur de Mal. It's a poem called Correspondence or Correspondences. And he says, there are fresh perfumes like the flesh of children, mellow as oboes, green as prairies, and others rich, glorious, and forbidden, having the expansive power of infinities, like amber, musk, benzoin, and incense, that sing of the ecstasy of the spirit and the senses. Oh. I thought this would be a nice poetic uh, way to describe the sense of smell as well. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's so hard to describe scents. But then I think if we try hard enough, we can actually do it. And I think it's, yes. it's very therapeutic as well to try and talk about scents. Because um, I think even just during this conversation, I, I tend to know you a little bit more through scents. Uh, because through scent, I know how you would feel towards this scent. And actually, on the other way, like this is how aromatherapy, when we were taught, is that if someone likes a scent, it's because this person needs this. Absolutely. So, so then, you know, so then, then you know what this person needs. Um, this is just a medium to actually understand other people more. I couldn't agree more. Good. Thank you so much right. for having us, Ada. It's been thank you so fun. much. And thanks, everybody. I'll save this and it will be on our um, on my life for 24 hours. And also, just to let you know, Nicholas is a yogi as well. And he does um, yoga classes every Tuesday. Um, oh, so... yes. I started doing online yoga classes. So if you're interested, drop me a message. Oh, there's a lot of, I didn't see it's the first time I do this. People are writing here. Sorry, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to check that as well. Yeah, we've actually got quite a few uh, questions as well, which, um, I mean, we'll be able to just, you know, uh, I will put them all on the stories and then we can just chip in our answers. And yeah. Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much. Thank Keep you so much. For and the world will be a better place. Yes, definitely. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Thank ciao, you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.